In this video, we will understand the different types of execution of a program, right? I mean, how when you run, when you write a program, how it can be executed and what are the different styles of execution which will affect us in giving the output. Maybe uh, your program is executed in some fashion, then the time of execution is very less, but it is occupying more memory. So it all depends on what programming execution style any language follows or you as an uh, engineer try to create that execution process. But we need to understand the execution process which are currently present and which we need, which we can support, right? So the first thing is synchronous and asynchronous processing, right? Let's say uh, you have two process, process A and process B like this right process A and process B. So in synchronous processing, what happens is you process one by one. It means process A is first processed, then after process A is completed, then you go to process B and you get the pro complete the process B, that's it. So it means in synchronous execution, in synchronous execution, in synchronous execution right you process one by one one by one right for example there is a function function executor right so task one and task two so in synchronous execution Always task 2 is started only when <coughs> task 2, <coughs> task 1 is completed, right? And the other style of execution is asynchronous execution, right? So we'll see first what is it individually and when to choose what, right? Because obviously you have to mix up your entire programming execution with all of these right in uh, asynchronous programming first thing we choose asynchronous programming or asynchronous programming is one thing which is executed like this so first uh, process a is running and suddenly it switches to process b and process A is also on hold and process B is also running. So it switches. So in asynchronous programming, what happens is you have, uh, you are dedicating your uh, execution or your working and one by one, I mean, see, you perform, so there is a 20 second task. So first second, you work on process A and then you come for process B and then you go for process A and then you go for process A process B again. So in synchronous programming, only after one process is completed, then only you move to the next processing. Whereas in asynchronous, you keep switching from one thing to another. So here tasks are executed concurrently. So in asynchronous execution, tasks are executed, executed concurrently. It means at any point of time, <coughs> both the tasks are in running state. It's just that the executor, uh, it's just that executor switches, switches his uh, power one by one. So first this, for 10, for 10, for 10 seconds this guy and the other 10 seconds that guy. But in asynchronous execution, this is what happens, right? And the other style of execution is, or asynchronous or concurrent. So here, see, as I said, in a concurrent or the other style of execution comes in when there are, when there is a system which you have multiple core support, right? So what is core? Core is nothing but each CPU. So right now, one each CPU can be called as single core. And back then, when programming was invented, 
there were only one cpu core and if you want another cpu you want another i mean if you want another core you want another cpu itself it means two different computers right which is technically not possible to run the code so parallel all scout concurrent programming execution concept comes in today's environment so let's say uh, let's take an example of uh, our brow our windows or our system right so you are performing microsoft powerpoint here and then after some time you can open with microsoft word so what is happening at a period of time microsoft powerpoint is also on and word is also on but it is just running behind the scenes occupying less memory space right see i am now switching here and suddenly i am moving to pop uh, visual studio code right so cpu intelligently determines where to give more power which one is active and which one needs to be executed and based on that the concurrency it means it is switching its power between two different resources intelligently now as i move here it appears to us that there i mean when you are moving from one system to another technically what is happening is uh, it is turning off powerpoint and then going to visual studio but the switching is so fast that you don't even observe this uh, latency or delay of switching from one application to another application like this when we do right so to understand more right so what you can do is uh, there is <coughs> a line of queue right and one coke bot one coke uh, coke delivery machine <coughs> so here in this cases there are there is one mail line queue right uh, one mail line queue and another female line queue we see this a lot right female line queue we see this a lot so wherever if there are two types of queues what we do first we allow one mail and then female one mail another female so this is called as concurrent execution because you are not stopping both of them or you are not completing entire mail and then going to female which is in case of uh, synchronous programming you do one by one but here you are intelligently determining this so that both the lines or both the task does not be in pending state for a longer time right and the other style of programming is is only possible first thing this is only possible in multiple core right and right now we are on a multiple core and the this style of execution is that you have separate threads allocated t1 t2 right separate threads allocated for running so when i when my when i am running process 1 and when i am running process 2 process 1 is run on a different cpu and process 2 is run on a different cpu right so in this case in this case for mail you have a separate counter for mail you have a separate counter and for female you have a separate counter so only when you are affordable affordable to buy separate counters or maintain separate counters then only it is possible right even in case of uh, <coughs> computers only when you afford to have uh, multiple core systems then only it is possible to support multiple applications right but now the problem is that <coughs> or the advantage is that now you don't even need a uh, multi core or multi core platform in the single core itself in the single core itself we got the concept of threads right so threads is nothing but dividing the cpu into multiple small small task wherein you can execute each process inside a thread threads are nothing but an an ability to uh, run each process in a single thread so let let's take an example uh, you are listening songs in an application you are uh, writing some code in your visual studio code and at the same time you are looking at some article in your chrome browser in another monitor or maybe so how is this possible is because our cpu assigns each thread assigns each thread to one process and that particular process runs in that thread which is totally independent and also parallel because 
you can listen to or you can listen to your songs you can write your code and you can look at an article or maybe you can copy paste from the stack overflow all these are possible at the same time because of the concept called as thread and inside thread the execution is happening in the form of parallel because all uh, all the applications are running parallelly on on a separate thread on your application right let me give you another example or let me let you guys think right there is a task okay there is a task to eat i mean there is a task whoever eats the cake and sings a complete song is the winner okay whoever eats the cake and sings a complete song is the winner now how you are going to do is totally up to you right so first case case 1 eat the cake completely and then sing this is called as synchronous right you are doing one by one so eat first you completely eat the cake and then sing so whoever does it fast then uh, that guy is the winner right but in synchronous case uh, you might see like if you are eating cake continuously continuously maybe you are losing interest and you want some energy to be burnt right so in this case you may or may not win but what if i eat for some time and then sing and then eat and then sing so point is i have to complete singing one complete song maybe i'm song singing in bits so i eat for some time then i sing then i eat then i sing then i eat so here what i am doing is i am switching myself from one task to another first eating first singing first then eating first eating right so this type of programming is called as asynchronous programming or asynchronous way of doing the task right and the last thing is maybe my i'll bring up my friend so i will eat and he will sing now both the both the tasks are happening simultaneously because i am good at eating and he is good at singing but here the advantage is that since both the process are starting at the same time and they are running parallelly there is a high uh, difference between the execution time of these two right so this last one is called as parallel programming and parallel programming can be achieved using a uh, multi threaded concept also but otherwise so here see if i don't have a cousin or my friend then i cannot complete this task that's why uh, parallel programming always needs some additional concept or additional power uh, which in the recent uh, technologies can be easily achieved using the multi threaded concept that is java and stuff like that right so these are the these are the different types of executions and now each has its own uh, limitations and each has its own advantages which each of those technologies like python java node js has adapted and now how node js or what node js has adopted and how does it intelligently manage it because ultimately you have to complete the task given to you in a faster way now where is a good where is it a good choice to do asynchronous programming and where is it a good choice to do synchronous programming right so that depends on exactly what has to be done so see here let's say uh, your cake is going to be getting spoiled almost or your uh, you're forgetting the lyrics right so in that cases uh, you cannot keep your cake waiting or you cannot keep your brain waiting so if you don't want to wait anyone then you can go with asynchronous but then you have to handle it differently but if you have money if you are rich then you can hire a friend and he will sing for you uh, but here you need to be rich so if you are not rich enough but if you want to complete the task 100% and also if you want to complete the task efficiently then what programming concept or what programming execution i have to pick it is totally up to you right then we'll now go on discussing about the architecture of node js and understand various concepts in it then we'll understand what node js has actually chosen and why it has chosen and what are the advantages when it has chosen that kind of programming style right